Hello viewers, and welcome to Renowned Explorers, more to explore. Uh, expansion pack for Renowned Explorers came out today, it's awesome, it's 674 on Steam, go buy it, it's cool. Um, I just said it's awesome, I don't know that, I'm just assuming, I haven't actually played any of it yet. Let's explore it together. So, the expansion pack complete introduces two new expeditions, some new game mechanics. You can find the new expeditions on the world map if you are playing at levels th three and five stars. Oh, oh, oh! There's, this is a third expedition and fifth expedition, right? So that's nice. There's a new ending expedition. You don't always have to go to Shangri-La. <coughs> and using the new campfire stories, once every expedition to transform your crew and strategy, and define your strategy through the new bonus choice offered every time you find a treasure. Okay. Let's do it. Let's get in there. Uh, so we're going to be playing Adventure Mode, Classic Difficulty. Uh, oh, hey, random buttons. Okay, we have randomly selected a crew. We're just going to go. <clears throat> this is not the best way to craft a crew, but I want to get right in here. If you didn't see the old Renowned Explorers uh, series on this channel, or you're just totally not familiar with this game, don't worry, you're not going to be lost here. I'm going to be explaining things. Uh, this game is, I think, really cool. I don't, I don't think uh, a lot of people know about it, but it is a really, really cool game. It's very board gamey, pretty abstract, but uh, that kind of stuff is right up my alley, obviously. Uh, this is it. You just got your renowned Explorers International Society membership. Harry wants to make a big entrance and goes for an elusive treasure, a Viking ship. Rumors are that a boat belonging to the famous explorer Leif Erikson is um, somewhere on this forgotten island. All right, let's not do the tutorial. I'll, I'll explain the game as we go. <clears throat> After exploring a few places, the meter on the bottom right will fill and you may start a campfire. This allows your crew to tell each other campfire stories that will give powerful upgrades and sometimes start relationships. Okay, this is a new mechanic. I'm not, uh... We have to visit four more nodes and then we can camp. Okay. <clears throat> so, you see here, we've got a map. It's got nodes on it. We are here. Uh, there are numbers along the edges of the graph. It costs supplies to travel from node to node. We start with seven supplies, and at each node, we have a little encounter of some kind. We find some things to study or some treasure or whatever. The goal of the game is to... You get five expeditions. You get to go on five expeditions. So the goal of the game is to have enough renown by the uh, end of the game that you are the most famous, the most renowned explorer. Um, that takes 2,500 renown. Renown is basically just straight up victory points. Um, and we get renown through a bunch of different methods, you'll see. So we're going to travel to this node. There's status and gold to be gained here, and also there might be an encounter. That's, uh, that's a perfect start to our adventure. Some cuddly sheep are fond of the crew and keep surrounding you. And this makes it hard to move, and you have to do something. Alright, we're going to engage with these sheep. Now, notice I didn't say fight. There are three... Uh, attitudes that you can use to resolve encounters. Uh, there is aggression. You can just do combat. We could just beat the crap out of these sheep. It would not be very difficult. They're sheep. They don't know what they're doing. Um, probably these sheep have, have very little martial experience, and we would win handily. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to be that guy. Uh, so you have a, a pretty standard, you know, slightly deformed hex grid here. Uh move and use abilities. You'll notice everybody has three abilities. A red ability, their aggressive a physical attacking ability, a blue outlined ability, their devious speech ability, and a green outlined ability, which is their friendly speech ability. So we're going to try to resolve this encounter friendly because you can see up here in the rewards area, there's an extra encounter token for resolving the encounter in a friendly way. So we're going to impress this sheep. And this one right here. No, this one right here. And Harry's like, I got medals and stuff, and the sheep is blown away by that. So, it's sort of... It's not really that different from combat, mechanically. Agatha von Brunswick is also going to impress a sheep. I She's a teacher, so I don't know if she was telling the sheep a story about giving people A's on their homework. Uh, Ivan's actually not very good at speech, uh, so he has Try to Excite. You can see it has an 80% hit chance and does 80% of his speech as spirit damage. And Try to Terrify, which is a similarly weak 
speech ability. Ivan's really only good at fighting. That's a shame. Uh, here, try to excite this sheep. See if he'll... Oh, he's, he's coming along. Alright, so you can see everybody has a bar here. Hit points, right? It's called spirit in this game because, again, it doesn't necessarily represent your physical ability to fight. We're going to resolve this fight without anybody doing any, any violence of any kind. Um, but they also have, down here, a bar that shows their, uh, their current mood. Uh, when you use positive abilities on people, their mood goes up. If you use negative abilities, their mood goes down. And then different abilities have different effects. You can see, uh, after trying to excite, the target becomes excited if it is positive. And he is. He's excited. This is his current, uh... So, when you're excited, you have plus 25% speech power. So there's a bunch of these different status effects. Uh, you can see these guys give impressed. Uh, impressed lowers your speech defense by 25%. So Ivan could do this to a teammate to make them uh, excited and make their speech more powerful. Uh, in addition, there are some negative things. Enraged costs armor. Uh, terrified lowers your attack power. And so a lot of the game is about managing the... Uh, managing everybody's personal mood, trying to keep people uh, defenses lowered, attack stats raised, whatever is appropriate. There's also a party-wide attitude. Our party-wide attitude is friendly because we've only done friendly, friendly things in the combat. And the opponent has a friend has a party-wide attitude as well. They also are friendly because they're friendly sheep. Sheep are just friendly. They're just like that. Uh, the game compares our attitude to the opponent party's attitude and creates a mood. So this mood is pleasant. Everybody's, everyone's nice. We're all friendly. In the pleasant mood, physical attacks have plus 50% power. So uh, you can backstab people and it's very effective. Nobody sees it coming on account of all the friendliness. I'll explain a little bit more about the combat, or about the encounter system in the next encounter. We're just going to finish this one up real quick. Sheep is excited about our cause, and we're going to impress this one with stories of giving students A pluses on papers. That's remarkable. This game is adorable. All right, so you get two encounter tokens every time you complete an encounter. <clears throat> Plus, we got an additional one for completing the encounter in a friendly way. And every time you complete an encounter, one member of your party, chosen randomly, gets a buff that lasts for the rest of the expedition. If you're friendly, the buff is plus 5 defense, plus 2 speech power. If you resolve the uh, encounter in a devious way, you get, uh, I think, plus speech, uh, plus speech attack and plus, um, plus speech power, it's called. Uh, plus speech power and plus grit, which is effectively dodge. And if you uh, resolve it aggressive, you get attack power and armor, I think. <laughs> you are a true friend of the animals. The sheep follow you, but Harry teaches them not to get in the way. Harry even gives the cutest sheep a name. Wooly Agatha, because he's making fun of Agatha. All right, so uh, we will continue around the nodes. We have six more supplies. Basically, what we're trying to do is get as many tokens as we can get and try to find some treasures. Treasures are good. Why are treasures good? Well, I'll explain it in a minute when we find one. While scouting the area, a goofy-looking man comes running up to you. Are you by any chance renowned explorers? You see, I'm kind of a big deal here. And I would love to travel with them and be part of their entourage. You know, to see the world. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, sure, we are renowned explorers. Would Come along, why not? The man is very happy. I can't wait! I promise to make your campaigns more effective. Uh, he rushes to your airship. Agatha is skeptical about whether such a goof will actually be of any use. Uh, but he is a lobbyist, so we got a green campaign token from that. And also he picked up a lobbyist. We'll talk about uh, the lobbyist in a second. Uh, campaign tokens give you the status resource. There's also blue tokens that give you the research resource and yellow tokens that give you gold. Uh, these three resources are spent to buy different kinds of things in between expeditions and uh, basically just increase the adventuring prowess of your party in various ways. In addition, we have this entourage, people who have pledged to help us. Uh, this is our guy. He gives us plus status from campaign tokens. There are also helpers that increase the payout of your blue and yellow tokens. There are st helpers that increase the amount you get from encounter tokens. You can see they give both status and gold. And then there are also specialists. 
Helpers increase the value of tokens. Specialists uh, create additional opportunities for you to get tokens. And you'll see a little bit more uh, what I mean by that at the end of the expedition. What's this? This note is blank. You find nothing of interest in this area. Oh, I uh, I thought this was going to be the hidden hoard. Every every expedition has one node that appears to be blank, but is instead very valuable. Uh, usually the first expedition only has that one blank node, but apparently there was a second blank node this time, so that's embarrassing. Now I look like an idiot. But we get to see there the risks inherent in going for the hidden hoard. You might instead get nothing at all. The crew makes a nice discovery, a ruined Viking village. It's been buried by the sands over the years. The crew fanatically starts to pull out plank, uh, planks, pots, and pieces. Then an old woman comes rushing towards you. What do you think you're doing? That's not how you excavate precious treasures. What? Who's that? What do you know about it? You're doing it all wrong. Allow me to teach you the, uh, the archaeologist excavation perk with my state-of-the-art shovel, the Grevmester 3000. An amazing once-in-a-lifetime offer. Uh, yeah, learn, ar 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 learn Archaeologist Excavation with the Grevmester 3000. Tell me more. Looks like I'm an audience member in an infomercial. Okay, so here we're gonna... Somebody's gonna get to learn a perk, so let's have a look at our people. So, your party members have, uh, by default, the three abilities we saw there. Uh, every party member also will learn two more abilities as they level up. Uh, in addition, they have some perks and some training. When we gain a level, we'll get the first column of the training thing. So we'll be able to choose whether we want to gain the Archaeologist Architecture perk or the Tactician Military History perk, and we'll learn this new ability. Um, and then next level up, we get some passive benefits, and on the next level up after that, we get to choose another perk, and then more passive benefits, and yeah, we gain more stuff. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about level up rewards as we actually level up, but the point is everybody gets perks, and these perks... Uh, in addition to giving a small stat boost, you can see plus two speech defense and plus one speech for each unlocked archaeologist perk. Um, the perks figure into our chance of success at various things that we'll uh, encounter. So, Agatha is already an archaeologist. Ivan is an athlete. He has tough and endure hardship. And Harry Walker is a rogue. Mischief and subterfuge. I think we're going to give this perk to Agatha. She is a level 2 archaeologist right now because she has two archaeologist perks. This will make her an even better archaeologist. The old woman teaches Agatha how to handle the Gravmaster 3000 with utmost precision and the finest digging techniques. This way you'll never destroy a treasure by accident. And apparently we've gotten a really nice shovel out of it as well. Plus a study token. That's good, I do love a study token. Uh, okay. Let's try this campfire thing. We, we, moved our, we moved four nodes. The crew has gathered around a special campfire where stories are told or even created. You can pick one story every expedition from your hand to upgrade and transform your crew. Finish a game of Renowned Explorers to unlock more campfire stories. Okay. Please, what's... Oh, I see. Okay, so we, we get to play one of these cards, basically. We have a deck of cards over here. Well, this is the hand we've drawn. We get to play one of these cards. So we can gain eight study tokens, eight campaign tokens, or eight collect tokens, or we can gain two resolve. The resolve is like um, your party's hit points. Uh, when, when resolve goes down to zero, you lose the game. Uh, you lose resolve by being defeated in encounters, mostly, but also there are some other ways, so we'll talk about those as they arise. All right, I think I'm going to take study tokens. Uh, I think study, or I think research is the most important of the resources in the uh, beginning because research gives you the, the most ability to improve your party. Harry adamantly makes a point to discuss a weird cultural phenomenon you observed earlier today. The crew really just wants to sleep, but a rambling Harry makes that virtually impossible. In the end, the crew gives in and joins Harry in the discussion, which turns out to be very interesting and... So we've got a, a word bolded, and in blue, that means that we got some research. Yep, eight study tokens worth four to six research apiece. Pretty good. Okay, that was interesting. So, 
Uh, if you run out of supplies, you can continue to move around the map and explore stuff, but you start to take penalties at every node you visit where you don't have supplies. So we want to be a little bit careful here uh, not to run out. I'd like to get this node because every encounter we do is worth experience points, and I'd like to get level up my heroes. Uh, also, there's a treasure or item present here. We want, we want this. Uh, sadly, I don't know that we're going to be able to do both of these things, so we're just going to go for this encounter. Treasures are really important. You find something peculiar. A note scribbled on a wooden slab. Harry picks it up to take a closer look. The meaning seems to be very cryptic. You don't really understand the writing. All right. You, invest you are investigating the slab when a group of mean locals pass by. They clearly don't like you being around. What are you doing on our island? You must be here to steal our puffins! You'd better get away! They're annoying, but their local knowledge might be useful in deciphering that cryptic slab. Alright. We're going to engage with them and try to use our uh, our powers of persuasion to get them to help. Or we could beat them up and make them do it uh, under threat of further violence. Uh, we'll get an extra token if we resolve devious, so let's try to resolve this deviously. Alright, so uh, you can see up here there's sort of a simple rock-paper-scissors system. If your opponent is being devious, you can be the better man or woman by being friendly. Um, devious beats aggressive, aggressive beats friendly, friendly beats devious, basically. So we're going to go friendly at first, just so that I can show you guys what I'm talking about here. So Agatha's going to use her friendly ability. He's quite impressed by her story about term papers. Alright, so, by being friendly while they're being devious we made the mood persuasive we are being persuasive and so we have plus 25 percent speed or plus 25 speech defense um, you can see down here <coughs> this has moved her speech defense up to a 51 percent reduction in speech damage uh, the different party members all have different defenses Ivan has zero default speech defense but he has a lot of armor he's a fighter he's a he's the muscle of the party uh, we're gonna Go finish this guy off with a little bit more friendliness. Oh no! His stupid try to excite ability failed. Alright, well, let's, uh, let's actually finish this guy off. He's very impressed. Harry has a lot of different kinds of badges and buttons on his coat, I think, so that's what. He was talking about where he got all his buttons, I guess. I appreciate the, uh, first of all, the game is adorable, and secondly, I appreciate all of the, uh, abstraction in the encounter system. Oh, he fumbled his attack. So the reason they're fumbling is, uh, that they have a low percentage on their attacks. We can't actually see what their attack is. But, um, you can also cause fumbles with a stat called Grit. This is your chance of dodging attacks and ignoring speeches. Uh, like everything else, some characters have more grit than others. Uh, in particular, Harry is a scout, and scouts tend to have high grit. Alright, now we don't actually want to end the encounter friendly. We want to end the encounter devious, because we want extra rewards. So, we have six points of friendliness that we've generated by using friendly attacks. We're going to now try to reverse things. So we're going to terrify the crap out of this guy. Ivan, scare him good. I fought a bear one time. Maybe that's unnerving. Maybe he said I am I am a bear in disguise and I will maul you. And then we're gonna use Harry's enrage ability to finish this guy off. So you can see it adds uh, adds pips to the encounter me or to the attitude meters up here, and now we've changed our attitude to devious. Each each attack you use of a certain attitude uh, puts one point into that attitude up here. And then defeating an enemy with an attack of an attitude puts an additional point into the meter. So we uh, we switched from friendly to devious. Uh, we have two points of friendly and four points of devious, and the meters are bugged. They should be showing uh, that devious is higher than friendly. I'll uh, I'll have to report that bug. Uh, but so now devious is our is our dominant attitude, no matter what the the meters here say, because we have four points. Uh, Basically, every time you do something in one attitude, you raise that attitude score, and you lower the score of the other attitudes. So we'll get the devious reward as long as we mostly do devious stuff during combat. 
Now she's got a different story of grading a different term paper, which was much less impressive. And then he's going to be like, I could use a sword on you, I could do violence, and she's upset by that. But she's not so upset that she won't obviously, uh... Chills down the spine. I would not want to be in her class. You broke your opponent's minds. That's a little grandiose for what we did there, but all right. Once they figure that you're simply better, they respect you and stop being so annoying. <laughs> Sorry we were such tools just now. Good thing you knocked some sense into us. We're just very protective of our puffins. Please, allow us to help you with that cryptic slab. Yeah, it's very sensible. You look at the cryptic slab together. The men you just went over share their knowledge of local dialects until you decipher the text. Harry thinks that it, uh, Harry thinks it reads that hidden somewhere far away from here there is probably... Okay, so here we get to we get to influence what kind of treasure we get from this uh, from this encounter. I don't remember what the different treasures do. We're just gonna pick one: a Viking brooch or a Celtic amulet. Let's try Celtic amulet. Oh no! Now that you know where to look, all that remains is to go there. Unfortunately, that's uh, some distance away. We're gonna run out of supplies. But whatever, it's important to get a treasure. So you can see everybody's leveled up. Every, uh, it takes 4 XP to level up for the first time, and each encounter gives you 2. So <clears throat> so you get to make some decisions here. Do we want Agatha to be even more of an archaeologist, a level 4 archaeologist, or do we want her to gain some tactician abilities? I think we want to pick up a level of tactician. <clears throat> and I think that because I know that in addition to the stats gained from the tactician perks, uh, <clears throat> you get a bonus in aggressive encounters that start aggressively from having levels of Tactician. At one level of Tactician, you get a little bit of a stat boost for the first couple of turns, and then uh, at three, you get a bigger boost, and at five, you get an even bigger boost. So we want to pick up some of that, especially since our party's a little fighty. And she's gained the ability Lecture. Uh, this is an AoE. It's a, like a cone, I think. Uh, a cone of sadness, basically. Uh, Ivan can continue becoming a better athlete, or he can gain some naturalist perks. Uh, natural philosopher sort of thing, basically. Uh, what we would now call, like, a uh, biologist or a geologist or whatever. Well, once upon a time, these people were called natural philosophers. Uh, we're going to pick up naturalist biology. We're just going to sort of fan out our party's capabilities rather than focusing in on anything in particular. And he has Pinning Strike. He basically can grapple with a unit and make that unit unable to move for a turn, and also uh, it's going to fight him for that turn. So that's actually pretty useful. And Harry Walker can gain Rogue or Beguiler perks. We're going to pick up Beguiler. Like I said, we're just trying to add up. You haven't seen it yet because we've been resolving conflicts in a friendly way, but Harry has a rifle, I think. Uh, he has a gun, and he's gained the ability to do a piercing shot. He can just draw a line and shoot many enemies. Alright, so everybody's gained some abilities. Unfortunately, uh, going back to get this treasure is going to run us out of supplies completely. I'm sort of fine with that. Uh, running out of supplies is not the end of the world. You can totally still succeed on an adventure where you run out. It's just gonna make things a little harder. So you can see we have various chances to get various treasures and the the odds here are in, influenced by that choice that we made. Oh, we've got a treasure, our first treasure. The Pumpkin King. Well now. Okay, this is new. It used to be that every treasure just had one thing that it did. Now I guess you get a choice. Oh, each choice is picked randomly from a set of bonuses. Some sets are shared between treasures on the same expedition, while some are unique. So this is one of the treasures from the, uh, the small Halloween expansion that they did. So apparently these are things that are possible for the Halloween treasures, and then this is something that can only occur on this treasure. Plus three campaign tokens at the end of each expedition for each level of quick thinker perks in your crew. That's a really powerful ability for some people. We have no quick thinkers in our crew, and no obvious way to gain a lot of quick thinker uh, traits. I don't think we're going to pick this one. 
Even though this one is, I, I would say, the most powerful of these. Uh, so you may notice secret and discovery tokens. These are not the tokens that are up here. Each each resource basically has a small token and a big token. Uh, campaign and study are the small green and blue tokens. Secret and discovery are the large green and blue tokens. So we can take a discovery token or a secret token and get a bunch of status and some research right now. Or we could improve all future discovery tokens. <clears throat> I'm going to... Also, what a weird treasure that we found here. Super, super weird. I'm assuming it's a statue, and not like a, a moving, mouthed jack-o'-lantern. I think I'm going to take... Uh, this is tough. No, we're going to take the secret token. A pumpkin? Weird, but you have the feeling this is a most valuable treasure. With this mysterious treasure collected, your crew can continue looking for the longboat without the feeling that they've missed something. But we're out of supplies, oh no. So every time you go to a node and you have zero supplies, one of the people in your crew takes a penalty that lasts for the rest of the expedition. Agatha becomes frustrated losing some speech defense. Bummer, dude. Alright. Well, we may as well travel back through this node. It's the same number of hops, no matter which direction we go in. Your crew stops in an open field. Delicious rare mushrooms are growing here in small troops. These delicacies will go down great at parties or as a gift to other renowned explorers. So some campaign tokens or out of supplies. This is rough. Ivan loses armor. He starts to feel feeble. Okay, so we have to get back to here. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really go... Uh, moving to this node would mean that we have to make another, yet another jump before we get to the end. So we're going to go to the explored node where we know we don't get anything. Here, he loses some attack power. Rough, dude. Alright, the Viking boat must be nearby. Once you get there, this expedition will come to an end. You can come back to this place when you wish to continue later. Are you ready to go? Yeah, let's go. The crew searches the hills and dales thoroughly until you spot it in the distance. An intact Viking boat! The crew rushes toward this amazing find. It will surely skyrocket your reputation at the renowned Explorer Society. But then we are stopped by a familiar face. The French explorer, Rivalou. Number one in the most promising explorer's rankings. He laughs. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you, amateur! How very lucky you are to find this fine Viking boat just after me! Under Rule 24B of the Explorer Mandate, fellow explorers should help each other out. And I really need this treasure to affirm my number one position. Your help will not be forgotten. Maybe. Yeah, this is my... I'm gonna explain to him. This is my, my, my treasure. I got here first, buddy. Go screw. Ah, oh, it seems my explanation wasn't clear enough. Maybe my strong friend Tommy can explain the situation better, while I take the vessel. Before Harry can stop Rivalu, his crew fighter Tommy steps forward. No, oh, little explorers, I need to explain you, uh, something. He's not letting you pass, and also his grammar's terrible. Well, we're gonna do what should happen, we're gonna do to him what should happen to every person who has bad grammar. We're going to physically bludgeon him about the head and shoulders until it improves. So, Tommy. Uh, Tommy Gun. That's a... Uh, both a pun and, I believe, the name of a porn star. So, An interesting decision <laughs> that the developers made there. Alright. If we finish friendly, he'll think we're nice. If we finish devious, we'll hurt his feelings and he'll leave. If we finish aggressive, he'll be impressed by our skill. Uh, if these little icons don't make it clear to you, uh, this is the best outcome. But we're going to spend part of this fight, at least, being devious. Because of the significant benefits of deviousness. So, let's... Uh, we'll enrage this guy. Everybody thinks you're a clown, man. Nobody takes you seriously. Nobody thinks that you're a cool guy. I don't know. There's a reason that we do this in a very abstract way. So while we are pro while we are devious and they are aggressive, we have plus 25 grit. We're playing mind games, and grit uh, is dodge. Remember. So <clears throat> we're also going to devious this guy out. These guys do not have a lot of spirit. Uh, Agatha and Harry both have high speech power. <clears throat> Harry also has high uh, physical attack power. 
Oh, you know what? I uh, don't want to do this differently. My plan was to have Ivan tank, because he has so much armor. But uh, his armor is all screwed up because of the out-of-supplies penalty. Well, he's still going to tank. And there's not really anything else he can do that would be useful. All, we could, all I could really have him do is run away. Make the enemies come to us. But we're going to punch the shit out of this guy. Uh, so, two points of aggressiveness, one for using an aggressive ability, and one for defeating an opponent with an aggressive ability. Uh, basically, I want to finish aggressive so we get this uh, get this outcome, but we're going to stay devious as much as possible on the way there to take advantage of this uh, take advantage of this party mood. And so a lot of the combat in the game comes down to this, carefully managing how many points of each attitude you have. Uh, these yellow areas on the ground, if you're curious, uh, confer spirit regeneration. As long as you're standing in them, you get plus 15% of your spirit regen at the beginning of each of your turns. <sighs> That's going to be relevant here, because Ivan's about to get whacked with some baseball bats. These dudes are poor sports. Okay, that hurt. He got seven back. So you can see he's only at 25 spirit now. We have to be a little bit careful. He can't just take a ton of hits anymore. <coughs> Alright. Uh, piercing shot cannot be used while standing adjacent to an enemy. So we are going to... Drop these two. Okay, he has a pistol. Alright, so while we're both hostile, devious abilities have significantly increased power. We're going to lecture these guys. Oh, the range is just a little tiny bit too short to uh, affect him. Well, in that case, we're just going to use Terrify, because it's just as good. All right, so the dominant mood right now, our, our dominant attitude is aggressive. They have the same number of points, uh, and tie is broken by which one is your current attitude. Unfortunately, all of Ivan's abilities are melee range, so we can't have him uh, stay here. We're going to terrify this guy with our sheer size and the knowledge of the fact that we've defeated bears in combat, and what are you next to a bear? Alright, so I did that both to push us into provocative uh, for the 25 grit and because being terrified has decreased his attack power. And also it's given him this ridiculous expression on his face. Uh, every character in the game actually does have different expressions for all of the different uh, personal attitudes. There's just a ton of detail. This is a really cool game. Alright, we're going to open up on him. Ivan is going to pin him in place with his fantastic pinning maneuver. Actually, hold on. We're not going to do that yet. We're going to start by enraging him, which will change him... Uh, Change his personal mood to Enraged, which gives him minus 25 armor. So we have now zeroed out his armor. He has no physical defense. And uh, Ivan is going to smash him good. I did uh, I did actually do a bad job there, and I <laughs> didn't, didn't manage my points correctly. We got a devious victory instead of an aggressive victory, and so we got the worst outcome. You're so mean! Tommy runs away crying, overcome with negative emotions. His tiny heart still needs some tempering, it seems. While running away, he accidentally drops a treasure map. But the Viking ship is gone. Revolu stole it while we were distracted. And we're left with a cryptic treasure map. So if you, uh, if you complete that first encounter in the most optimal way, you get to make a choice that influences what treasure you get. If you do the thing we did and take the least optimal choice, you just get whatever treasure you get. The treasure map is passed around. Oh no, apparently we do still get to make the choice. Uh, the treasure map is passed around. After investigating it, the crew states their interpretations. So it could point to a Viking antiquity site nearby, it could point to a treasure buried deep underground, or it could point to a difficult to reach area. Uh... Jeez, I don't know. Uh, let's do this. Let's arbitrarily do this one. You, if you uh, play the game a lot, you can memorize what treasures come from what. I do not memorize what treasures come from what. 
Uh, the, tra the crew looks around carefully, tracking ancient footsteps and following the treasure map for hours. The crew finds some valuables, but nothing else. So you can see we got some uh, gold, some collect tokens here. Just when the crew is about to yield, Harry's idea pays off. A new treasure. What did we find? A Viking drinking horn. So, 100 renown. These are victory points. Uh, two insight that we'll be able to spend on various things. And then some choices. So Viking treasures can have either of these choices. And then these are choices that are unique to this treasure. So let's see here. Three campaign and three study tokens. Uh, plus status from secrets. That's interesting, especially since we already have a secret. Uh, these tokens haven't given us anything yet. You can see that the rewards are... are, uh, are Resource levels are all still zero. So taking something that increases the payout of a token, uh, this token right now, will still, will get that from this token. Also, gain an extra two collect each time you resolve an encounter friendly, or gain an extra two study each time you resolve an encounter friendly. Our party is not particularly good at friendliness. We're good at physical aggression and deviousness, but we're not particularly bad either. Actually, we are particularly bad, aren't we? I don't know. Impress is... He's got a powerful version of Impress. She's got the same... It's basically just Ivan, who's bad at stuff. Huh. I think we're going to take... This bonus. I don't think that we want to push this group in a friendly direction. We're way better at deviousness and aggression. We're not bad at friendliness, but yeah, we're going to do this. Alright, so all of our secret tokens from now on are buffed. We like secret tokens. And we've completed the first expedition. With some cool treasures. And you can see here, now we are getting the payouts from all of our tokens. We got a fair amount of status there. On page 8 of the Renowned Explorer's newsletter, a story about us. Small discoveries. Exotic location uncovered in the Icelandic Isles by promising explorer Harry Walker. The Explorer Society board members are excited at the progress of this classy crook. And the, uh, the title you get here is dependent on your actions. Classy crook is, uh... I don't remember how you... I don't remember what each one translates to, but... Uh, you can see we have 264 renown. In order to win the game, we must have more than 2,500 renown at the end of the game. At the end of the fifth expedi uh, expedition. A magnificent job! The board of the Renowned Explorers International Society is impressed by your exploration skills in the Highlands. For this achievement, Chairman Pinkerton gives you an upgrade to your airship, which allows you to carry more supplies. Uh, we are not going to do the tutorial, but I will, I'll explain things to you real quick. Uh, so you always get this. 50 renown, 1 free insight, and... Increases your supply capacity by two, so up to nine. Okay, so this is the world map in between adventures. This is where we spend our accumulated resources. Uh, so we've gotten five insight from our various treasures. Including the one insight that we just got for free, basically. Uh, an insight is spent at these places here to get more tokens. So you see we can go lecturing and get collect tokens and different members of uh, your party are different to are good at different things to different degrees so Agatha would get two collect tokens if she did some lecturing Harry would get three he's a better lecturer Ivan would get a collect token and an encounter token that's pretty interesting uh, Paris is where you get campaign tokens uh, everybody gets two campaign tokens nobody in our party is particularly good at that and then we could also spend our insight studying at Berlin University. Agatha would get an additional token there. She's a scientist. She's good at studying and knowing things. Uh, so we have to decide what resources we want. In addition, there is a shop where we can spend our gold to buy upgrades to our stats, our various defenses, our various offensive stats, and in addition, trinkets for everybody's trinket slots here that have different abilities. So a lot of trinkets give you perks or they affect particular um, attitudes. You can see these make you take less damage from certain speeches. There are also trinkets that increase the damage you deal with certain speeches that make you uh, start encounters in various moods and things like that. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of cool stuff. 
And then finally, our other resource, research, is spent at uh, this screen on research papers. So these are pretty different, I think, from the last time. I think the last time I recorded was when the game still had the first set of uh, of research papers. These have been completely rebalanced since then. Far more interesting. It's way less obvious uh, what you need to take every time. Uh, so these, if these look like the social policy trees from Civ Five uh, to you, then yeah, you're basically on the right track. That's what's going on here. So you can get all kinds of passive bonuses. See, if we unlock this, it will cost less status to upgrade our Entourage Hall. Oh, I didn't show that yet either. I'll show that in a second. And then, uh, each paper costs, um, ascending amounts of research. The first one will be 10, the next one will be 15, the one after that will be 20, and so on. Uh, they start to rise pretty sharply. But, uh, we can get, like, a point of insight now, plus one more insight every time we finish an expedition for the rest of the game. We can get a another lobbyist in our Entourage, and then a bunch of campaign tokens. Uh, plus campaign tokens every time you enter an encounter. Uh, extra supply capacity. Every one of the extra supply capacity is probably pretty obviously uh, like the best thing ever because it means you get more nodes, which means you get more tokens. Uh, so every tree has a plus supplies thing, but they all have different plus supply things. So uh, this one just gives you two. This one gives you one right now. Plus an additional one for each expedition you complete after you get this. This is very powerful, in my opinion. Uh, this one lowers your supply capacity by one, but you gain a supply every time you solve an encounter with an attitude that you choose when you pick this. Uh, so each of the trees gives you different uh, ways of getting supplies and different ways of getting various bonuses. Uh, you get a study token every time a naturalist, engineer, or archaeologist succeeds on the adventure wheel. This is actually pretty interesting to us because we have two different party members... Uh, we have... Ivan is a naturalist now. And Agatha is a, an archaeologist. Uh, so, I think I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take... We're gonna unlock observations. Focus on observation to unravel puzzles of this world is the most important idea of modern science. The crew has an opportunity to specialize one crew member in any of the sciences. We're going to give Harry an engineering perk. Harry's ready to be a more expert engineer. Which field is he going to learn about? Let's learn about advanced tools, maybe, or combustion. You know what? I think this fits his personality. Harry learned engineer combustion. So the reason I did that is so that now all three of our party members uh, trigger this. We have a naturalist, an engineer, and an archaeologist. So now whenever we do an adventure wheel, we gain a study token. Uh, you guys haven't seen an adventure wheel yet. Uh, we didn't have one at all during that. Well, we'll come back to this in a second. I, I do... Well, hold on. I know for a fact I'm going to pick this up. We may as well just get it. Uh, we're also going to get improved storage because supply capacity is great. Okay. Uh, the last thing. Status. How do we spend status? We spend status at the Entourage Hall. We can buy more helpers. So you can see, uh, plus output from various tokens. Or we can hire specialists. Specialists give you more ways of acquiring tokens. So these guys are pretty straightforward. Uh, gain extra tokens from resolving encounters in various ways. We're going to upgrade this shop to level 2, which adds more available helpers and also adds a new tier of specialists. So if we recruit Mine which is kind of clever because you don't know who it's a parody of. It could be Monet, it could be Monet. Uh, then we'll get extra collect tokens from spending our insight in Paris. So Paris will give both collect and campaign. That's not terrible. Uh, or we could go for Champion Vasilia, who will both give us campaign whenever... So she'll give uh, campaign tokens whenever a level 2 or 5 quick thinker succeeds on the adventure wheel and also will teach someone a quick thinker perk. Or we could get the professor here, who will do the same thing, but uh, he teaches an engineering perk and gives bonuses to a level 2 or 5 engineer. We don't have anybody with Quick Thinker, so teaching somebody Quick Thinker would only make a level 1 Quick Thinker, and so they wouldn't be getting this. If we, if we recruit this guy, he can teach Harry advanced tools, and then Harry will be a level 2 engineer and we'll, get, we'll be able to get this bonus. 
So that's pretty interesting to me. We might do that. Um, oh, we don't have enough uh, status to afford him. Well, that's okay. We can. Uh, we have some insight to spend. So I think that, I generally speaking, I like to go heavy on research. Um, in the early game because unlocking these trees is great. Uh, completing all research in this project, if we get all five of these things, we'll get to choose plus 50% uh, victory points from gathering one particular resource. I think we're going to go really hard on study. And actually, I could have done this uh, more intelligently, I'm sure you noticed. We're going to get a student, get two more insight. Um, the smarter way to do this would have been to do this first, so that you get extra study tokens from spending your insight in Berlin, and then spend all our insight and then buy more. Basically, I just chose to get less, uh, I chose to get less research by not paying attention to my options before clicking on stuff. That's a bad habit, I'm sure you've noticed in my other gameplays. <laughs> Alright, well, well, we're gonna do that now, though. So, plus two study from spending insight in Berlin. So now we're getting five tokens each time we spend an insight, and this will definitely let us complete this research tree. No, we came up, I think, one short. We needed 60. Oh, that's frustrating. We just booted so many, ah, oh, so many resources by not paying attention. Oh, well. Let this be a lesson to all of you, and to me, although I've should have learned this lesson many times by now. Oh, I screwed up everything. That was that was really bad. And I should have bought a student before spending any of that if the student had triggered even once. Uh, well. Clearly you guys are not watching this channel for the uh for the skilled gameplay. So we could go pretty hard on study tokens. We could hire Igor the plotter. Our party's pretty good at deviousness and aggression. Uh, we have lots of devious and aggressive abilities. Ivan has two aggressive abilities and is going to learn a second devious one. Uh, Harry, Harry's ability that he's going to learn doesn't do anything, but he has two aggressive abilities. Harry's just good all around. Harry's kind of good at everything. Except low defenses, but he's got uh, high grit, so he's good, good at dodging at least. Well, I think that we're going to go Igor the Plotter. Let's get study tokens. Let's 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 do science, shall we? And so, um, come back next time. We're in the, this is the end of the episode. No, it's not. We're gonna buy stuff real quick. Uh, so we're gonna upgrade the shop as well. I just want to show you the different things that are available. So there are higher qualities. The basic glove gives you plus four attack, plus one speech. The new one that we just unlocked is plus 8 attack, plus 3 speech. Uh, also, there's more trinkets to be had. Uh, Diplomat languages perk, and all abilities that uh, excite do 10% extra damage. Uh, this is not bad. It gives athletes stamina and extra damage to terrifying abilities. And so you kind of get the idea. And then there's three different types of armor. There's uh, um, defensive items. There's armor, which gives armor lowers physical damage, uh, mementos, which gives speech defense, and then boots, which give a small amount of speech and armor defense, and some grit. These can only be worn by scouts, that is, uh, people who have green backgrounds to their pictures. Uh, the game does a good job of color coding. Scouts have green backgrounds and are mostly wearing green. Uh, fighters have red backgrounds and are mostly wearing red. Scientists have blue. And then um, there's, a, there's another group of guys called speakers. Uh, we don't have one of those, but those guys are coded yellow. So let's, uh, let's shore up Ivan's low speech defense, I think, with a decent memento. We're going to sell his vest and buy him a memento, because he's going to be on the front line a lot, and I just think it's a good idea to have his defenses raised. 
Uh, I'm gonna bank the rest of my money because these small purchases are not really very valuable. So come back next time. Uh, I'm gonna be recording more of this game, obviously. Come back next time. We're gonna go on our next expedition. Probably, my guess is, to the Caribbean. Uh, Molly wouldn't be terrible. I think my party, my party probably wants the Caribbean, though. So, come back next time. Renowned Explorers. We're gonna explore the Caribbean. We're gonna get more research. We're gonna see more new features. It's gonna be cool. We'll see you then.